Hey, what's up everyone? So in today's problem segment, we have why to play and win. So as a chess player, it's really important to keep analyzing board positions and coming up with the best moves. So that's why I picked this very interesting problem where it's not the usual why to play and mate kind of problem, but it's more of a why to play and gaining a sizable advantage where in which white will definitely win the game. So pause the video if you'd like, uh, but straight up we'll just try to analyze the board because this is the way in which you know US chess players should approach any position while playing a game. So let's just look at the board. So we have white being a queen down, but instead white is a rook up as well as a knight up. But still you could see that black has a sizable advantage because obviously it's a queen that black has and towards the end of the game especially in end games that queen could prove to be the major difference but still white's position seems to be pretty good these rooks are in good positions on the board king is also pretty safe and we have this a6 pawn which is well advanced which could turn out to be really good so Pause the video and try to come up with the best move. And this may not seem to be a very obvious move or some huge sacrifice. It's a very simple, subtle move, but that in turn would turn out to be the best move for white. So the move over here is f3. Now you might be wondering, f3 is such a normal move. So I mean, what is the brilliance behind this move? So now you will find this later on. So after f3 we have queen h5 because obviously the queen has to move away from g4 so now pause the video and try to come up with a brilliant move so the move over here that white plays is rook into b6 sacrifice now what happens after a into b6 now you have a7 and that a8 promotion is inevitable there's nothing black can do to avoid that pawn promotion Black as a queen, black as a rook, black as his king, and yet nothing can be done. So now, you might be wondering, you now why did white play this f3 move, which seems to be wasting move, and just directly go for the rook and b6 sacrifice. Now what happens over here is, after a into b6, and we play a7, black has this move called queen e4, and this is basically a clear win for black because white cannot promote its form. So the beauty about this f3 pawn is not only does it drive away the queen with tempo, but now black cannot go to this important square which is e4. So you can see that it's the beauty of these small, simple, subtle moves that ultimately makes the biggest difference. So that's why f3 is such a powerful move. So after queen h5, we have rook into b6. So obviously black can't capture because then it would be a clear loss. But still black doesn't give up. So black plays queen h1 check. We have knight g1. So we have rook into d6. We have e to d6. And after a to b6, we have a7. And that a8 promotion is inevitable. There is nothing black can do. And it is at this point the game was resigned. So... If you want, let's look at the board again because what other possibilities could black have? Probably after rook into d6, we have e to d6 and let's... So probably let's just think that black doesn't capture the rook and instead black plays queen h5. But then it's still a loss for black because then you have rook b8 check, we have king d7, you have rook b7 check, king c6, d7 push. So a queen has to come over to d5 so that... To prevent the pawn promotion and then you would have knight e2 the plan is probably to drive away the queen by playing you know knight f4 next and black is white is also planning you know bishop h4 so that white white can promote its pawn safely so this you can see that there's nothing black can do despite having a queen on the board so hope you all enjoy this problem please do like and subscribe to my channel Stay tuned for more problems. I'll be posting up more videos soon. So, hope you all enjoyed. Thank you.